An enormous floating turtle that could be the home for 60,000 people on a super yacht. And let's face it, those people will have to be very, very rich. The project's initial cost is in the $8 billion ballpark. In response to rising sea levels and climate change, governments around the world are developing strategies to adapt their cities and towns. A design studio in Italy has gone one step further by designing a floating city shaped like a turtle. There would be 60,000 guests on the Pangios Terra Yacht, along with hotels, shops, parks, and even aircraft on board. It would be the largest floating vessel ever constructed. In Lazzarini's vision, the Pangios would never dock on land or emit carbon pollution because it would continually sail the seas. The plans for this $8 billion turtle-shaped superyacht have raised eyebrows. Pangios, the Terra Yacht, would be 550 meters long and 610 meters wide at its widest point making it the largest floating structure if anyone built it. Assuming the project is built, visitors will be able to stay overnight in a hotel, stroll through the park, and shop at some of the shopping centers. After an NFT-related crowdfunder, Italian designers Lazzarini hoped to bring their ambitious concept to life, but construction would take eight years. Nine high-temperature superconductor engines provide 16,800 horsepower each. Powered by a jet-drive transmission, the Terra structure will cruise at five knots. It will be possible for Pangios to cruise around the planet perpetually without emitting any emissions if necessary, since the large wings will retrieve energy from the breaking waves while sailing. Solar panels line the rooftop area of the Terra Yacht, providing part of the clean energy it needs. In terms of size, the $8 billion Turtle Yacht would be the largest boat ever built. It's a boat if you really want to call it that. Let's face it, this behemoth is a floating city. For heaven's sake, it looks like something from Waterworld with Kevin Costner. These are the places you'd want to live if the world was covered by water. You can even rent a dock with your own personal dock at some of the units. In addition to taking around eight years to construct, the huge structure would require a gigantic shipyard to accommodate it. Lazzarini, the studio behind the concept, isn't fully funded yet, but they are trying. In a crowdfunder, investors are selling NFTs to raise funds for the boat. Crowdfunders can buy virtual spaces on the Terra Yacht, which could also serve as a property deposit if the boat is ever built. Houses and flats are available, as are super villas and even palaces. According to Lazzarini, the design was inspired by Pangea, a supercontinent that existed millions of years ago. It's believed that Pangea was the largest supercontinent that existed on Earth. Approximately 300 million years ago, Earth had only one continent called Pangaea, which was surrounded by one ocean called Panthalassa. In the past 195 million to 170 million years, Pangaea broke up into several phases. According to the chapter, the breakup occurred about 195 million years ago when the central Atlantic Ocean opened. Previous structures were largely responsible for the fracture of the supercontinent. Now that we've covered the history lesson, why would anyone build a floating city at all? On Earth, new and disastrous realities emerge as a result of global environmental and socio-economic shifts. Climate change and global warming have become alarming realities, and island states and coastal areas are leading the push for climate awareness. Global warming is causing sea levels to rise, flooding coastal areas around the world. More than 800 million people may have to relocate from 570 cities by 2050, according to estimates. Globally, 90% of major cities will be affected by climate change by 2050. Would it be possible to move an entire city to the sea instead of relocating people? In the face of rising sea levels, floating settlements are a realistic solution. That's why people around the world are developing cities on the sea instead of on land. Technically, the concept is similar to artificial islands, which have been around for a long time. Artificial islands, however, are built on landfills and do not float or move. Additionally, their construction can have an adverse effect on the environment. In contrast, a floating city is an interconnected modular structure that resembles an island that floats on the water without affecting the ecosystem of the ocean. The United Nations has even approved this concept. Speculative fiction often features floating cities. Imagine cities have been floating islands in water or in the atmosphere of a planet. In the end, the experiment aims to develop a robust and effective floating city model. Scientists learn which shapes are most effective and durable by measuring the weight of floating structures in water. 
The knowledge of rising sea levels has made floating cities more likely than expected, especially for coastal cities. A floating state is the goal of the Seasteading Institute. It's hoped that it will free mankind from politicians and political power. The concept is still just a dream at the moment, however, it has a lot of potential. We'll soon have a modern utopia if we can figure out how to build it. There are many people who wish to live in this utopian environment. Floating habitats aren't a new concept. Human beings have lived in them for centuries. The Chinampas of the Aztec Empire were the first floating cities. Among them are Venice, an Italian canal city built on 118 islands in the Venetian lagoon. Tonal Sap residents live in floating houses constructed from bundles of reed. The floating shanty towns of Lagos are home to thousands of disadvantaged people. It would be utopian to live in a floating city. 21 of the world's 33 megacities are located on the ocean's coast, despite 40% of the world's population living below sea level. According to some estimates, 90% of coastal cities will be flooded by the end of the century due to melting polar ice caps. It may seem like science fiction, but floating cities are a very important concept that's being discussed by the United Nations. According to a recent article, floating cities are necessary for two reasons. In the first place, they would help us address climate change. Furthermore, floating cities would provide us with an offshore refuge from climate change. As a result of these two factors, floating cities would be more feasible. Therefore, floating cities could help resolve both of these problems. Coastal cities are currently running out of land. We'll be left with a future where many coastal cities will be underwater if we continue to use the same land. By 2030, sea levels will rise by 7 inches due to climate change. Moreover, 90% of the largest cities around the world are already vulnerable to climate change. Some countries, such as Singapore, are pouring sand into the sea to reclaim their coasts. However, sand is becoming scarce, so floating cities could provide a solution. Floating cities are also providing new land for coastal cities. The cities would eventually become self-sufficient in food, energy and water with sustainable energy and water production systems. Recycling or using wastewater from citizens' homes would be possible. Furthermore, floating structures can create artificial reefs and save lives. As a result, floating cities may be the solution to a problem that's plagued coastal regions for centuries. In the long run, they may even be a solution to global environmental problems. We need floating cities so we can move from land to water without worrying about gravity. Construction costs are a major challenge for floating cities. One floating city could cost as much as $167 million to build and house only 300 people. It would be prohibitively expensive to build even a small floating city. Floating cities, however, have many advantages. Natural separation is possible, and they can be quickly established, self-sustaining and self-sufficient. A beautiful view of the landscape is also provided by these structures, which can also withstand earthquakes. As well as recreational equipment, they can be equipped with water parks and beaches. Social welfare can also benefit from this. The concept may just become the next big thing if it does take off, especially with a growing population and land shortage. If realized, the turtle-shaped vessel will become the world's largest floating structure ever built. At a cost of 8 billion US dollars, this might be the most expensive too, and perhaps a sign of things to come.